All right, check out these shoes. It's called Zebra Frage or something like that. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today we're doing a shoe review. And just like the title says, this is the Kraft Taylor Motion Ultra Carbon Running Shoe. CTM for short. So we're going to talk about the shoe, some of the specifications of the shoe, some of the pluses and minuses, and its use. It is a weird one. It's hard to tell because of the zebra frage or zebra flage or whatever you want to call it. But it is an interesting shoe, and it is a pretty cool shoe. All right, so let's get into it today. Some of the specifications of this shoe. This is a um, maximum stack height shoe, maximum cushion kind of shoe. This is 260 grams in a men's uh, eight and a half UK. So this is like, a, and so in, in America speak, this is about 9.2 grams in men's size nine. Um, so, uh, like I said, it's got maximum, uh, cushion and maximum stack height. This has a 40 millimeter stack height. That's all I say what the stack height is, but they do tell you that the offset is a 10 millimeter offset. So my, uh, assumption is it's 40 millimeters in the back and 30 millimeters in the forefoot. So it gives you a nice 10 millimeter drop from the heel to the forefoot. Uh, I don't generally like a 10 millimeter drop. But with the Rockridge kind of design here, you don't really feel the drop so much. So it's not as noticeable as typical shoes that have a 10 or 12 millimeter drop like A6 and some Nikes and that kind of thing. Oh, so the outsole, we have a nice, very aggressive for a road uh, rubber outsole here with some exposed uh, vault foam is what they call it. Some of the foam here is ex exposed. It's got this funny back area here um that's kind of like cantilever we'll talk about that as well let's show it on this side this might be a better way to see it and in this midsole there is a carbon fiber plate a tuned carbon fiber plate so we'll explain what that means as well and the upper is an engineered mesh upper is very light and breathable and thin and also very uh, nice and snug and secure with an innovative kind of lacing system to it as well so that's the basics of this shoe. Now let's talk about some of the speci uh, specifics behind this shoe. Okay, starting with the outsole. The outsole has a three millimeter lugs on it. So it is a very aggressive uh, tread uh, type for a road shoe. So this shoe can be used on some moderate trails as well as the road. It's very grippy on the roads, very grippy on moderate trails, cinder trails. I've taken this on the sand and eh, sand it's not great but on some pack trails it's fantastic you can kind of see there just uh, some of the detail of what the tread looks like so you have the rubber on the big pad of rubber on the front and the forefoot and a pad of rubber in the back kind of provides some durability to the shoe moving to the midsole the midsole is like i said 40 millimeter stack height and it has this kind of flared heel section here so this is kind of like uh, some other shoes have done with uh, having this flared area it's like Hoka. So what that does is that provides some more structure. It also changes the center of balance, it's our center of mass for this shoe so that it actually helps with the uh, accentuating the rocker motion of the shoe. So that is another purpose of this as well to help feel more of like a rocker to help uh, propel you forward. So there's a lot of science behind this in physics that I don't, basically just don't understand, but that's what they're telling you. Also, uh, we'll get to the upper a little bit more, but this upper has no stiff heel counter. So this rubber or foam back here provides a little bit more structure to the heel area and helps lock you in better on the heel. So then within this midsole, this is called vault foam. And this vault foam is a very uh, dense, Foam. It's not squishy at all. I'm gonna show you, try to show you here real quick. So you can see I'm kind of squishing it, but it's not that easy, not nearly as easy as like the Nike Vaporfly uh, series of shoes. It's not squishy at all. This is more like if you're interested, if you 
are familiar with Hoka. This is kind of like the Hoka on a, on a Carbon X. In fact, I have that shoe right here, and I can just take that shoe. This is the Carbon X, and it's also very uh, stiff as well. So it's kind of on the same durometer base as the Hoka Carbon X shoe. Um, so it's a, it's more of a responsive shoe. It's not super soft. But uh, with the rocker feel here, it does help propel you forward and you don't feel the impact nearly as much as you would um, on a typical shoe, on a similar shoe with a kind of, this similar kind of foam uh, just because of the rocker feel in. Inside this midsole is, like I said, a tuned carbon fiber plate. And in that carbon fiber plate, so the, the tuned mean is it's actually a split. So it's actually a kind of a big toe area, a split, and then another area and then it's all carbon fiber within this midsole. So it's buried in the midsole of this shoe. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? They go to the upper. The upper is kind of interesting. There are no real overlays here. Just a nice airy mesh, engineered mesh upper here. And then towards the back, it's got more of a solid feel here. It's a little more structured <clears throat> than in the front, just to kind of help give more uh, lockdown and stability to the heel, even though there is no real stiff heel uh, counter here at all. Within the upper, there is actually a couple of little padded areas here to help lock your your heel in a little bit better when you lace up. And this is a very interesting lacing system in here. You can tell, you can see the laces are kind of offset, so some of that are farther apart than others. Some are close, some are far apart, and this helps get a better lockdown as well on when you're tying your shoes. Uh, we'll talk about a, a disadvantage of this uh, very soon. And then in the front here, you have a little bit of structure, but not a whole lot of structure in the toe area just to provide a little protect, protection, not nearly like a typical trail shoe because it's not a typical trail shoe. We'll talk about what this is for, in my opinion, this shoe in general. Uh, so looking at how stiff it is, like I said, it's a stiff shoe here. And uh, we'll actually show, um, I think I have a diagram of what the shoe is broken down into. So it'll show like the insole, the midsole, the outsole, and the carbon plate all in one thing. I'll try to show that right here, if I can remember. So it's a very stiff shoe, like I mentioned. And if you do the dance test, it does not want to really move a whole lot. It's got a little bit of movement, but not really a whole lot. And that's because of this bolt foam is very stiff and also obviously the carbon fiber plate as well. So, like I said, this is a zebra flage, zebra flage uh, color scheme, and this is uh, what they do for this. Is this is for those prototype shoes that they don't want the competition to see the, the, the detail of the, of the shoe. So uh, this was a prototype shoe. They also are selling these shoes in this zebra flage kind of color scheme. And uh, they're also available this month, May 2021, in other colors as well. So you can get them on the Craft website um, in different colors. I think there's two colors for the men, two colors for the women. So some of the pluses of this shoe. Well, it is a very uh, supportive and, and highly protective shoe. You don't feel any of the road. So if you're not into feeling all the road stuff and every crack and crevice, this is the shoe for you. You don't feel any of that. It's also very supportive as in, um, it doesn't have like a medial heel bridge or anything like that, but the foam is very protective and supportive as well. You're not falling, you don't feel like you're falling in or pronating too much. It's also very durable with this kind of outsole. This outsole should last for hundreds of miles. And uh, we're gonna do a review in uh, 50 miles or more and uh, see how everything's holding up. But so far, it's everything's holding up really well. Very durable outsole. And you have a wonderful locked in feeling with this upper. It just locks you in. It makes you feel like that you are one with the shoe. It is fantastic. All right, some of the, uh, and the rocker shape. I'm gonna talk about the rocker. It's wonderful. It does feel like you're running, forced to run on your midfoot or forefoot. It propels you forward. It's a beautiful rocker design. Fantastic. It's kind of like what Hoka has been doing, but it's a little bit different, but it feels wonderful. Okay, some, uh, oh, and before I get into some of the negatives, I want to talk about the midsole or the insole here. The insole is kind of neat, took a little while to get used to it, but this is Kraft's own uh, insole here. 
so it doesn't look that fancy but this is also a different kind of uh, vault film I believe and you can see if I can show it right it's got a kind of weird bubbly bottom to it and uh, yeah it's actually kind of like a foot massage when you're running in uh, nice thin socks it feels like your insole is giving you a foot massage it's fantastic uh, it took me a couple runs to get used to it but it's actually really nice I actually do really like this insole with the, with the kind of like the massaging nubs to it it's kind of really nice to it I like it all right so some of the negatives to this shoe um, first we'll talk about the weight the weight is like I said 9.2 ounces and for a carbon plated high stack shoe there are other shoes that are also high stack carbon plate and much lighter the Nike Vaporflies, they're in the uh, six ounce, seven ounce range. There's a bunch of other shoes out there that are in the high fives to seven ounce range. This is 9.2 ounces. So this is a little bit heavy for a marathon racer and definitely way too heavy for like a 10K or 5K racer. Definitely uh, too heavy for that. But I think some of the weight goes towards some of the outsole here and to some of the foam as well because that foam is pretty dense. The other negative about this shoe is the lacing system. Like I said, the lacing system is wonderful. It really locks you down. It really makes you feel like you're one with the shoe. It really locks in your heel really well as well. It has enough eyes in it to uh, do the runner's knot. So there's actually another eye here that I'm not using. But the negative thing is, there's two of them, is the, the way that the lacing is done in order to get in and out of these shoes, you have to pull all the laces open and loosen all the laces so that they're really loose in order to get your foot into the shoe before you go run and to get your foot out of the shoe after you're done running. So if you're one of those people that likes to kick off their shoes after a run, you're not kicking your shoes off. You're, you're locked in here. And the only way to get out of it is to untie your shoes and then pull the laces loose all the way down to get your foot out. Same with getting your foot back in and make sure all your laces are nice and loose. Um, I do like, I'm gonna skip back to a thing I do like, I do like the tongue. The tongue is not very padded, but it is protective and it is semi-gusseted as well. So it is kind of attached to the upper, so it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, however, the negative about this is the tongue is too short for me. It needs to be another quarter inch longer in order for me to actually wanna use this last eye and do the runner's knot. If I go one more knot or one more eye up with the lacing, then I feel like the laces are gonna be on my top of my foot instead of on the tongue itself. So in my opinion, the tongue is too short by maybe a quarter or an eighth of an inch, just a little bit, but it's too short. Other than that, the tongue is fantastic. And I like that it's somewhat attached to the upper of the shoe. It's, it makes it very nice and stable. Finally, the other negative about this shoe is price. On their website, it's $250. And this is not for a Nike Vaporfly that's six ounces. This is nine ounces and $250. So why would you pay this kind of money for this shoe? Simple, this is a great training shoe. This would be a good tempo day shoe for sure. So those days when you're doing your tempo at marathon pace for seven, 10 miles, that kind of thing. Fantastic shoe, very good protection, won't beat you up. A little bit heavier than a racing shoe, so it gives you a little more of that weight to deal with, so it makes you a little bit stronger. Fantastic for that. I run this one with this shoe on the track. It's not great on the track. There are better shoes for the track day for track days. But the other shoe, the reason that this shoe was made is this is an ultra marathon race shoe, in my opinion. So if you want to do 30, 50, 60, 100 miles fast and you don't want anything to hold you back and you want plenty of protection for all those miles and all those hours, here you go. This is the shoe for you. A lot more protection than Nike Vaporfly for sure. Probably more protection than a Hoka uh, Carbon X or X2. Plenty of protection. I've run some longer miles in this shoe and it feels wonderful from mile one to mile 15. No problems at all. Anyway, that's about it for the shoe. Hope you enjoyed it. If I missed anything, ask the questions down in the comments below. Leave a big thumbs up on the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And until next time, peace.